Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We are going to start off by making some cheesecake brownies. Now I've never made these exact ones. Basically I found a recipe for homemade um, gooey fudgy brownie and combined it with a recipe for cheesecake brownies. I used to make a version of these a lot when I was a teenager, before my husband and I were married, which was just when I was a teenager because I got married when I was 20. Um, but I used, it was just, uh, I didn't cook a lot, but I did like to bake. I didn't cook a lot at that point. Um, but there was a recipe on the back of a brownie box. I don't remember what it was. I don't even think I have it anymore. And I haven't made these in forever, but my husband was, um, for many years, was in bands. And I used to make these for the guys before they would go on tour, you know, trying to be like the cool girlfriend. And they loved them. But I would make sometimes like a double batch, like, oh, this'll, this'll last them. And like, of course, the guys ate it in like two days. Anyways, uh, we are going to a pool party today and it's like 95 degrees today and um i'm bringing it some brownies and or i'm bringing a dessert and i asked my husband i'm like what should i make and he's like why don't you do some cheesecake brownies and i was like i bet i can find a recipe so we're gonna do this together i've never combined these together but i've have made the concept of cheesecake brownies in the past so uh the recipes sound good we're gonna do it and we're going to a pool party like i said but my house is a mess because i'm working on pull out all like fall decor uh which is i know it doesn't really go well with pool party but it's the end of august it's north carolina it's hot but my mind wants fall so we're gonna do it all together but right now we're gonna make some brownies so let's get started so I started by preheating my oven to 350 um, because I knew that would also help me soften my cream cheese. So I have my cream cheese here and two sticks of unsalted butter, butter which didn't actually necessarily need to be um, softened ahead of time because we are going to melt them in this saucepan. But I figured I would just get them a head start. Um, but I do that a lot. When you need something softened, just get the oven preheated and stick the item on top. And that does the trick. So we're gonna get this melted. This is, I'm struggling a little bit here. We're gonna get this melted and um, go from there. And this recipe, the original recipe, which I will have linked below, I will link that recipe and then I will write out what I'm doing for the um, cheesecake part because I actually wrote out from something I saw somewhere and I was like, no, I think I also need to add a vanilla to that. So I will just write that out um, and link the recipe for the brownies. But the brownies are supposed to be made in a nine by nine inch baking pan. But based on the comments and the creator's responses, um, they're really, really thick brownies that way, which is great, but I really want to make more. Plus, I'm adding a cheesecake layer. So we're going to do it in a 9 by 13 and just adjust the baking time based on that. And she did put it in there. Uh, I think she said 23 to 25 minutes, which is a little bit less than the original recipe. So I will try to remember to put all of that down there. But just go through the... Um, original recipe and read the comments and all that and you'll you'll get some of that information as well okay all right so once our mutter our mutter once our butter is melted you're just going to take it off of heat i've just got it sitting on a pot holder here we're going to stir in a half a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips you can do anything any ones that you want the recipe calls for semi-sweet and that's also always what i buy and then two cups of granulated sugar. Now you just wanna stir this until it is all combined. Now I was thinking of doing a pumpkin dessert, but I thought everyone else that's going to be there may not be quite as ready for you know all of the fall feels like I am so I do have a really fun pumpkin I think it's kind of like a cookie bar type of recipe I don't remember exactly um, that I want to be making soon so that'll be in another video somewhere along the way all right so the sugar is not going to be like dissolved or anything but you want to stir it until the chocolate is completely melted which it is and then we are going to add in four eggs one at a time um, just making sure that you stir to combine it um, as you go. All 
I love this because it can all be done in one pan. Um, you could also do this in a bowl and just melt the butter like in the microwave if you wanted, but um, I love that it only uses one pan. Okay, that's not gonna fall out yet, okay. Um, because it just saves on dishes. Now I will be using another bowl to do the cream cheese part, but that's okay. I'm really thankful it's not using a lot of dishes because <laughs> let's be honest, I still have some dishes from dinner last night. Not our eating dishes, but my cooking dishes that I need to tend to as soon as I get this in the oven. A whisk might work better, but I'm almost done with this part, so we're just gonna, just gonna stick with it. Okay, now you wanna add in some vanilla, and I, it's one teaspoon of vanilla. This is my vanilla. I make my own vanilla extract I have for years. Um, although I've actually only made it a couple times, but a batch lasts a really long time. Um, you could go online and look up kind of the ratios. It's been a long time, but basically if you can find a good deal on vanilla beans, which is sometimes a challenge, um, I couldn't even tell you where I've bought them all the time. Um, I've gone in and like split them with other people. Um, anyways, but you basically get some good vanilla beans and you can either use vodka or this last time I used rum and you just score the beans and drop them in the bottle and you let it sit, I think three to six months, you just kind of shake it every once in a while. Um, usually it, but just every time I go into the pantry or whatever, I would shake it up and that's it. And then after several months, you've got some vanilla extract. And this last batch, I actually decided to use the beans a second round because I read that you could do that and I think it worked pretty good. So it's nothing I've ever shown on my channel because it's, I've literally had the same batch for ever. All right, now we are going to add in our cocoa powder, flour, salt, and baking powder. And then you're gonna use, it says big strokes to stir just until mixed till you no longer see dry ingredients. Do not over mix and don't beat it. So you don't wanna use beaters. So um, like I said, the measurements will be down in the description box below for you. Apparently I'm not the neatest baker here. I'm making a little bit of a mess. This is like really chocolatey, but that's not a bad thing for me. I'm also realizing that this uh, cocoa powder is almost gone and I'm going to need to buy some because I don't think I have any more in the, oh my gosh, in the <laughs> pantry. <laughs> don't worry guys, I got this, I got this under control. This is gonna end up being pretty full, but I think it's gonna be just fine. It's, a, it's gonna be just fine, it's gonna be just fine. Also, if you go ahead and use um, salted butter instead of unsalted butter, either eliminate the salt here altogether or um, maybe cut it in half. Just a heads up for you. Now let's see if we can mix this without making a mess. What do you guys think? I mean, the mess has kind of already been made, but can we make not any more of a mess? A bowl might have been easier. The only other pot I have that is like really big, which seemed unnecessary. But this seems unnecessary too. Sorry, I just got a little weirded out because I was like, there's a man in my backyard. And then I realized it was my husband because he was gone. I didn't realize he was back. Okay. I'm supposed to just be using big strokes and not over mix this, but <laughs> it's gonna be just fine, guys. Listen, I'm not a professional cooking show. I'm just a housewife who likes to make stuff and share recipes with you. It's gonna come out great. It's just gonna be a little messy, but that's it's fine. I'm trying to fold in some of that goo from the bottom. Does anybody else try new recipes when they're taking food to other people? I know that's probably not like the best idea, but it's like, there's so many recipes to try. It's like, I don't always wanna make the same thing over and over again. I mean, how can you go wrong with this? Like, I don't see how this is gonna be bad. And actually, I'll probably, I don't know. I was gonna say I'll try one, but I think I'm gonna leave them in the pan instead of cutting them and putting them on a plate because the pan will be far easier to transfer. And if it's in the pan, you can't try it because then everyone can see that you tried it. I was gonna say my default is like, I'll just go pick up some ice cream sandwiches or something, but and this is gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I have full confidence. Okay, I think there's no more dry stuff. I'm gonna pour this into our greased 
9 by 13. And we're going to work on the cream cheese part before we get these in the oven. If you want to be able to take the brownies out to cut them easier, um, put parchment paper down because then you can just pull that out of the pan and cut them up. But like I said, for transport, this is going to be easier. Can I just I can just pop a lid on it and it'll at least look pretty when I show up with it. All right, so now I have one block of cream cheese that is softened. We're going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one quarter cup of sugar, one egg, and then we're going to mix this. I don't really want to pull out my mixer, so I think the cream cheese is softened enough that I can just do this this way. Let's see. All right, we're going to evenly put this cheesecake topping on top. Mine's a little clumpy. That never bothers me. I really like cream cheese. Um, yeah, it does bother me. If it bothers you, pull out a mixer. You don't have to evenly spread it here because we're gonna we're gonna do some swirling. But I'm just trying to lightly disperse it, trying to not pick up any of the brownie at this point. You'll see in a second when we swirl it, we're gonna mix it a little bit more. But I'm just trying to get it in different parts of the pan. All right, we're just gonna take a knife. I'm just using a butter knife. And we're gonna begin swirling it. And sometimes I pick up the knife a little bit to try to intertwine it a little bit more. These are some thick brownies. They're like, I could literally cut them with a knife now and they come apart. Now, I'm gonna just smooth this out a little bit because like I said, these brownies were thick. I mean, when I swirled it, they like were coming away. So actually, you know what, maybe I'll do this. I like that intertwined look a little bit more. All right, now we're gonna put this in the oven at 350 for 23 to 25 minutes. Like I said, because we're using a um, larger pan, so the brownies are a little bit thinner. All right, so I took the brownies out after 23 minutes and the center was definitely not done yet. They are going to be like gooey and fudgy, so I don't expect the toothpick to actually come out totally clean, but um, they're definitely not ready. I'm gonna try to keep filming through the end of this recipe, but he's home and yeah. we have uh, Bill's preseason game on and the fan is, we have a box fan going because I think that somehow enhances the experience. Is that why we have the box fan on? Smile. Okay, cool. Got your thumbnail. Do you, do, why do we have a box fan on? We have central air. I was warm. He was warm. So anyways, needless to say, when the TV's up, which it, he turned it down for me for a second, and the fan is on, you can't hear anything. Anyways, that's, uh, I'll check in with you when the brownies are done. I'll let you know. Looks like you're eating my bacon. Nope. Jesse's making some quesadillas. See, it's obnoxiously loud in the background. I got cheese, ham, and bacon. Looks I got like, cheese on my head. And looks like he's doing something with pepperoni. And sorry for the randomness of Jesse. I mean, not sorry. Just well, I'm watching cheese heads, but don't call me a cheese head. Sorry that it's probably confusing. If you know where that's from, I will be greatly impressed. And I'm going to stop now because he's yelling at the television. No, I'm not talking to it. He's talking. There's a difference. The ladies can appreciate the difference. He talks to the referees like they're going to change their mind, though. No. No. I talk to them. I don't talk. Who are you talking to? What? All right, so this might vary based on ovens or whatever, but I ended up doing it more like 30 minutes, which I think is closer to the original recipe. But um, just keep an eye on it, but it looks good. I'll let you know what we think about it. Um, we're taking this somewhere, so I won't be showing that, but I'll let you know. I'll probably put it up right here if they were good or not, and I recommend trying them, but they look great. This is the current state of affairs. Fall stuff everywhere. The noise, I don't think you can see it. Bacon. Jesse is outside pressure washing. He decided he was going to do that today. And I'm trying to make sense of fall stuff. I'm trying to see what I might still need or want. Anyways, I'm going to start in the kitchen. All right, so this is where the tear tray is in my kitchen. It's in the corner. And then I have this little sign next to it. This is from the Hobby, from Hobby Lobby. It does cover up a plug, which isn't a huge deal if it's seen, but um, I like this here. And so I don't think I'm changing that for fall unless I find something or make something else. Um, 
That's another reason why I'm kind of going through my decor now because I'm in the middle of some fall DIYs on my other channel. If you did not know, I have another channel called Simply Enjoying Crafty and I'm needing to see what else I want to make because I really only make stuff that I need for my house. So um, this is one on a recent video. I will include links for you. I did used to do, to do DIYs on this channel, but I have since moved all my DIYs over to the other channel. I made this cute little pumpkin book stick. Sorry, the lighting is kind of bright. And then I also did this little, little number here. Um, not everything is DIYs, but um, I, this is one that I, a pumpkin that I made over from the Dollar Tree. This fun little pumpkin that I made. And I did kind of a little makeover DIY with this, which I'm actually going to switch up again before we use it on this tier tray. When I made this DIY, all I had was this glittery pumpkin, or <laughs> glittery pine cones from Dollar Tree. But I'm gonna swap it out for some of this filler I picked up from Hobby Lobby. But I'm gonna need to rinse out this jar because it is gonna be filled with glitter. I think I'm gonna try to use these little mini mums from the Dollar Tree. Sorry if you can really hear the pressure washer. He's pressure washing the back of the house right now. All right, I think I like this better than the last little arrangement. I like those florals, but not in this setting. Okay, that's getting loud. I have a couple things that light up, which I love to do, especially in the fall and winter. So you won't be able to see it as well because it's kind of bright, but um, that little house lights up from Hobby Lobby. I picked that up this year and this little pumpkin, I think this was also from Hobby Lobby maybe last year. Slide this out. I like to decorate this with it in the corner because I feel like I can get a better idea of what I need it to look like, but I do need to move it. And I'm moving the camera a little. I do need to move it a little bit to get some things in the back here. And I just use things like this just kind of as a filler. Um, it just kind of peeks out a little bit and I'll show you a better angle in a minute. I think that's all the main stuff. Let's fill it in with some pumpkins. I think I'm gonna try these little mini velvet pumpkins from Dollar Tree. They're really cute. And they're like in decent little shape. I also want to, I think, tuck in some leaves, maybe. All right, hold up. I knew I'd pick these up, but I didn't realize I had three of them. I think I want to use one on my tear tray, so hang on a second. These are kind of messy. I mean, they're not kind of messy. They're very messy. So I'm going to try to do a one-time placement of this. Holy cow. See, I've never used these before because I always was like, oh, they're so messy, but they're so cute but they're so messy. I will have to show you the remnants. So let's just pick a place and leave it there. I think I don't like this as a riser this time since so it's getting in the way. So first of all, here is the mess from the hay bale. <laughs> but as long as you don't move it once it's placed, I think you'll be fine. And um, yeah, so let me clean this up and let me show you the finished tier tray. All right, so it's a little bit darker just because I wanted you to be able to see the lights a little bit, but I love how this came out. I tucked some pumpkins in the back just to kind of peek through as a filler, and I love this kind of giving it some height. Honestly, actually, that might not need to be up there. Hang on. Okay, I like that even better. I put the orange pumpkin on the riser, and this has enough height on its own, and just tucked in some leaves and little pumpkins. And then back here, I know it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to turn the light back on just to help you see a little bit more. But the little hay bale. And this one doesn't light up as bright as the other one. But I think in, at night you'll be able to see it. And then I have just this, like, um, oh my goodness. What is the word I'm thinking? Like, I'm not a, it's birch, but I'm like, bark. A bark uh, covered, like, log or candle oh my goodness that one is also battery operated i don't have um or that does light up i don't have batteries in it right now i need to do that and then i just tuck a little plant in the back to kind of fill it up um in the back but i love how this came out and when i first started i was like i don't know if i have enough stuff to go on here but once i got going with it it uh, came out pretty cute all right guys well it is a few days later we kind of got busy in the day um, we had to wrap things up and head out to the little event we were going to. Brownies were a hit, 
They were still really thick brownies. I can't imagine how thick they would be in a nine by nine pan, but they would be amazing. So either way, make sure you check out that recipe and then I'll have all of my instructions also with that in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this little, you know, hodgepodge of, uh, of a video, a little baking and fall decorating and kind of like vlog style, but uh, hopefully I'll have some more of that coming. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, hit the thumbs up, hit the like button before you leave, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.